the reason, maybe, maybe yes, the reason there's a camera is... Um, is You're putting it on the internet, I know. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it's bad it's, enough. Uh, no, but, 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 yeah. It's yeah. because we have four core teams in four cities and there's 4,000 people in 60 places. I think they should have access to these precious meetings and it's really not about putting it on the internet. It's yeah. about... I think it's about making, you know, people are putting effort into constructing these thoughts, and I think it's 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 incredible. It needs it, they're generous acts, and I think they should be shared. That's all. So it's not putting it on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not, no, I think that's a really. That, 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 that's right. I think I think I think I, if an ad, if an ad for is a synonym to filming, then obviously you know in various. As, as anything we do is effort, you're not taking the shape, it's an effort. <laughs> then you're literally saying everything you do should be filmed and put online. But I know I'm not speaking about, I think we should just maybe instead of saying it should not be filmed or it should be filmed, it's not a matter of two of you and people, but just like what does the whole group say? Would it make a difference if it wasn't filmed and it was just, it was just cool? I don't care, I don't care. So no, I'm just no, saying no, what's up to the people. Question. Isn't it that there's other groups that are also having the same discussion so they can listen? I mean, it's not just for anybody, it's for some, a particular audience that is doing the same thing. Yeah, I'm just I was, uh, maybe it was because, because it's pointing at one direction, so I was just suggesting to take another perspective yeah, you can with the camera. I can turn that it, that's all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is but who's speaking, maybe an idea. So? No. But maybe another idea for, maybe not for that session, but for similar workshop-like sessions would, could be that if there are four or five people that have certain statements and then there is a breakup in smaller groups, you know, that for example, I would be very interested to continue talking with, uh, uh, with you, you know, uh, about the presentation and others, maybe with, with some other people. And then this is the, you know, instead of like a little bit artificially changing places now, we're sitting where maybe just like say, okay, like I'm, Let's focus for half an hour to talk on those issues in the groups, and then let's meet up again. I mean, it's not a very new idea, but yeah. I have been to one or two yeah. conferences uh, like that, and I have to say it really, it really works uh, super easy in this way of like you know diluting the <laughs> the focus only on the speakers and then joining joining in. So. Mm -hmm. I, I think here. Yeah, you yeah, describe yeah. what we wanted to do next time, but. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I mean, you know, honestly, it's it's but, an idea. Yeah. Yeah. Not not today because we are not ready for that. I guess. But I think it's it's a good idea. Also, you you raised the issue about also that what are the strategies, what are the aims, for example, in this context of this uh, hands of revolution? Because I mean, I think that's also one part of this process is probably to develop certain kind of approaches and strategies. And I can imagine that this same gathering would be really different in Warsaw or in Helsinki, for example, where I come from, where we actually have a right-wing government and we have a fascist minister of culture and education and so on. So I think that these approaches and things is of course we talk on universal level and then we talk on local level. And I think it's also interesting just to think about for example in that context that yeah, but the specific this kind of what, it, yes exactly that what kind of strategies we also need in different levels. And, and I think all of us have different expectations also. So breaking up the groups also would kind of exist. Here, good for that. Well, be good, or no? Yes, it would be good mm -hmm. for developing different strategies also regarding different questions and interests. Um, nevertheless, I wouldn't give up on the attempt to somehow bring some of the statements that I've been made into contact. And, and for example, one example, both of you m mentioned in passing that you had certain issues with how documented played out in Athens. Yeah if I got you right. And, and, and maybe it would be interesting to just give one example or, or, or point out what you think could, could have been a problem if there was one. And because also, I mean, if you talked about Lagos and, and Documenter is the, the best financed uh, biennial in the world, if I'm not mistaken. And, um, and, and that doesn't, that's actually a great starting point in, to, one, to some extent, but it also produces certain structural problems, I guess. So, what, what's your perspective on that? But you, you're the one who is critical of the first one. Oh, <laughs> I think, I mean, I have uh, plenty of... I, I was 
Because they're seeing it develop, so I know maybe well, too much. I saw it uh, but, the preview. But you, uh, it, your insight would be invaluable yes. because I, I, I was there for two days, so, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I would so appreciate some insight without it being without it being a betrayal, you know. Look, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> now we have an expert. <laughs> betrayal, yeah, exactly, an expert. But, uh, I, I betrayal of whom? I mean, I, I don't know who I would be uh, betraying. I mean, I'm, I'm an independent uh, person vis-a-vis -vis the documenta and vis-a-vis -vis also the Athens scene, so I, I don't have it. But uh, we've worked with both, uh, you know, Bonaventure, who's uh, part of our board, and uh, then we also have uh, the Athens Biennial, which has uh, also supported us uh, in the past. <coughs> they, uh, and I don't think Benvenuto himself was at all involved in the Athens side of things, but uh, Documenta, but the Biennial uh, under, uh, Documenta under Adam Zimchik and the Biennial under Pocahillo split. And uh, so that is public knowledge, it's nothing new, but it's, maybe it's new to you, that the local scene and, uh, and the international scene were at loggerheads. And they uh, didn't communicate for some time. Um, many of the staff uh, was uh, kind of like they left one institution to the other, and uh, there was a kind of draining of resources from the local scene to the documenta scene. And uh, then there was this famous statement by uh, Adam Jimchik that he's not doing the Biennale for the local scene; he's doing it for an international audience, which caused a huge uh, outcry. And, and there's been many. Uh, Iterations of this problem, and from the beginning, the, you know, this graffiti that said we will not exoticize ourselves for you, Documenta, to um, uh, you know, the actual Athens Biennial was called. I mean, it's, it, it's coming in two years, but it was their title is "Here Come the, ba the Barbarians." <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> it's, it's not uh, you know from somewhere else; it's from the north. It seems mm -hmm. pretty clear. So uh, you know, there, there's a there's a there's a huge conflict there. Um, and we've been more or less observers, and uh, you know I think it's worth investigating why that went so wrong, um, uh, because it is really a problem when when a biennial, especially if it's a kind of UFO type of biennial, just kind of lands and then disappears again. That it, it what does it do for the local scene? And of course there is an exchange with the art academy in Kassel, and there's a lot of kind of back and forth. Many of the artists are doing things in Kassel. I don't know what the do you know more? I mean, there, there, there are some longer term effects, I'm sure, but uh, it's hard to tell how much uh, the, the, the international UFO respected the, the indigenous population, so to speak. Uh, can I ask you a question? Because you, you mentioned it being involved in Manifesta. Which was? Uh, was, oh, that, oh. was that. Uh, no, no. Oh, you did. No, I, I said that, that was something else. Okay. Because I mean, well, I would just be I'd be so interested in hearing about how because it's almost the inverse uh, hypothesis Yankovsky's uh, attempt uh, you know at, at mm -hmm. engaging kind of um, a street level civic society in a place like Zurich it, it's almost the inverse of what uh, documented <laughs> yes. attempted you know what I mean and failed and failed horrifically as well uh, so. Uh, one was one was perhaps a more noble attempt. I'm not sure. But... Are we going to talk about documenta the whole time? <laughs> what do you want to talk about? Well, actually, I have a comment about documenta. <laughs> I, know, I know nothing about really documenta. I went on the website once or twice, and I think it touches a bit on what you were talking about. I'm sorry, your name is Suzanne. Suzanne, what Suzanne was talking about, and. Um, with all respect towards the organization and what it does and all that, um, I mean, I think that the idea of our, what, what, it, what it hands off, what it kind of gives out is, it's dealing with like a huge amount of people. I mean, um, you know, populist movements or, or minorities, or these are people, you know, they're not like intellectual artists. And when I go on documentas, um, website or when I try to read stuff about it, it's so it feels so closed off to 85% of the people and 85% of the people I know who aren't, you know, artists involved in a specific type of art they don't, they never heard of Documenta and since we're talking about social issues and politics I think it's a relevant question maybe I don't know, 
so that's why I kind of I, I actually spontaneously said, can we talk about something else in the other <laughs> time? I don't know if you get my point. Can, but, yeah, I'd like yeah. to actually, I was, I'm just going to raise the same issue. I mean, this, this issue of elitism, I think, is extremely important. Issue of what? Elitism, of, elitism. Of, 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 uh, of, you know, the intellectual kind of arrogance of, of uh, many, many different kinds of art production where we kind of, uh, you know, are playing a kind of insider game. And, and this, this alienates a lot of people. And so, I mean, I, I understand the reasons for this historically and so on, but can you... I mean, just for a moment, if you compare uh, the, the, the political and artistic scene, I mean, what currently is happening is everyone is saying in the political world, look at that elite, you know, they're just, they don't know what we're doing, they don't care about what we're doing, they don't have a, any kind of language for us, and so they don't actually communicate anything about what their processes are. And I, I, we see this quite commonly in our world. And I tend to disagree to some extent. Let's say uh, you're an astrophysicist, you're inevitably uh, elitist because your subject matter is very complex and you need to learn certain basics to understand astrophysics or to learn uh, some, some foreign languages. If you learn Japanese, you have to put some effort into it and you can't expect everyone to be able to speak Japanese. And I think to some extent it's fine for the art world to have these kind of complex languages and this specific, let's say even sophisticated approaches that said, I think, structurally in Documenta and in other exhibitions, there's another problem at, uh, at state that looks at first maybe like elitism, but is much more owed, I think, to a certain kind of uh, outcome of, of the pressures of being a curator um, uh, uh, amidst, on the one hand, the political side, the, the, the kind of, the, the, don't underestimate the, the oomph of the Documenta uh, uh, Gesellschaft, you know, this, this quite, a big administrative body running this whole affair on the one hand, on the other, the public, which is a very complex thing. And I think there's a strategy of diffusion at work, and I heard the word actually being used by the curator as a documenter, the word diffusion, which is a way to sort of deflect that pressure. Somehow say we make it a bit more sort of cryptic and a bit more sort of hard to access to ward ourselves off from these pressures. And it's kind of an understandable impulse, but it's extremely counterproductive because it, it, it replaces the actual complexity of issues with the fake complexity, complexity of this diffusion. That's, that's my problem. But this is also, I don't know, I think this, these problems go hand in hand with something I'm go, I, I, I've been thinking about a lot the role of the curator. I think the, the role of the curator has been boosted by, by <laughs> ever more by the actual political crisis in Peru. Uh, because the curators seem to feel like they are the ones to mediate what's happening in the world with the art world and vice versa. But that, that brings in the complexity and that brings in the, the Diffraction, and uh, there were times when art was considered elitist for aesthetic reasons. Now it's considered obviously elitist for intellectual reasons, and I don't know if it's a good exchange. I mean, if it's, if it's a good way <laughs> to, to kind of change symbolic capital from the aesthetic but, but to the intellectual. Yeah. Uh, I'm totally d'accord to a certain extent with what you said because. That, but that reminds me of other things uh, that's been discussed in movements, for example, over and over again, professionalizing. Because what you've been pointing to was a certain professionalization is inevitable. And it brings with it the specialization which others don't share. But there's nothing you can do against that. I'm, I'm totally d'accord. But I think the curator's power right now to, to, to feed in messages and to make artists work on the keys that the, the curator feeds in is too big. And adding to this, I wanted to ask, uh, is this kind of coalition of artists working towards unifying the artists as a, let's say, group? Universal, if you want to, but group, or is are the artists kind of trying to stand up against the Trumpisms 
and so on, and all the other disasters in the world that is fight against something which is outside the art world. I think that's a, that's a, that's something very important to clear if you want to work politically in one way or the other. Uh, okay. uh, I want to um, uh, go for everything we said kind of to now from the quest, starting from the questions that were posed. Uh, are, are you answering a question or are you bringing up another point? No, I want to even try to to come out with some feeling about what was said to now uh, to give some response to the question. Can you hold on to that for a minute? Because I think her question yeah. is quite crucial, and we should discuss it. Like, what is yeah. this actually about, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yes. No and and Don't just worry. hold on to it right after. <laughs> but let's not forget that question. Can I? Can yeah. I? Uh, I'll speak to it briefly, and I'd also yeah. like um, Eliza. Perhaps you could also speak to it because um, so the conference I was at in Brussels was called "Us versus Them." How can the cultural sector fight uh, right-wing populism? Right, and um, I suggested an inversion of, of of the equation, which was how can right-wing populism help to define our cultural work? And um, I said that over the last. What is it? Six months since November, um, I've seen a radical shift in uh, aesthetic strategies, uh, 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 the vocabulary in, in, in which uh, the art world, from from uh, the way biennials are described to to the way. Um, uh, artsy uh, justifies buying art at the moment. To you know, so uh, I've seen this like tectonic shift in 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 the in, in the way the various art worlds are functioning because of of, of, of this crisis. Mm -hmm. So maybe we can make use of the crisis to kind of uh, define uh, or, or or make more accurate or, or more effective our own work, right? And I think, um, but maybe Eliza, you just want to talk a little bit more in, in more accurate uh, terms in terms of what Hands of Our Revolution is actually attempting to do. Uh, sure. Do you feel like that? Yes. Um, I mean, I think uh, a lot of the points raised are really interesting, particularly your critical points are super instructive as we continue to refine what we're doing because it is still very much a formative. Stage. Um, I think what Adam says is critical in terms of assessing the status quo in which we find ourselves and allowing that status quo to define or perhaps refine our artistic practice. I think it is about unifying cultural practitioners and creating a network, an international network. And I think it's also, and this perhaps touches upon your point about elitism or um, abstraction, it's about affirming um, arts, arts place in the fight, right? Um, I think something that Adam and I both feel strongly is that art has become very ruptured from the political front line and does have a role to play and can play a role. And that we'd like to, yeah, we'd like to, to, to mend that, that breach. And I think uh, the final point is also about, uh, an associate point is to, to identify the groups, activist groups that are working on the ground and that are experts in specific themes, in specific uh, issues, in specific areas, also geographic areas, um, you know, right down to contested seats, for instance, in the upcoming British election, um, and, and building that bridge between cultural practitioners and activists who are, who are the experts. I think that's, just from my personal point of view, having basically joined uh, after you called me and said, can you help me set up that first workshop? <laughs> um, and and my, my, I would think, counter to what we earlier discussed about biennialism and, and elitism and stuff, it's like the theory here is very simple, but the practical side is so complex.
movements. And the theory is very simple in the sense that, yes, all these movements are already out there, people are already active, but they're in isolation from each other, mostly, other than the abstract sphere of social media and newspapers and stuff. And I think what, and, and unfortunately, the right wing has been very clever, in Europe at least, in interconnecting. They meet in Prague, they meet in Budapest and in Koblenz and where have you, uh, and on all levels from like the big parties like uh, Front National and AFD and, and Gerhard Wilders and stuff down to like really like the hardcore fascist movements. They have these really strong networks all across Europe and across the world. And, and ironically, the art world I felt was like very well connected, but didn't make use of that network to, to pool ideas, pool uh, certain kind of sets of knowledges and exchange, and, 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 and maybe that's not the least part of that, create a sense of I'm not alone in this, you know. And yeah, well, I mean, that's easy to ridicule, but I think that uh, it's precisely this sense of like, uh, well, what's my so-called little fight here? It's, I remember that example you gave of the teacher uh, who had a class in, in the US, who one part was uh, being told uh, we'll build a wall, and the other was uh, hating that, right? And, and how do I deal with this? And they got in contact with him. You think like, well, I mean, why? But that's precisely because there's a certain kind of isolation going on with certain local scenes, and then there's a certain kind of, uh, uh, sort of easy jet set going back and forth, but that's not enough. So how to create a, a, a real, more sort of consistent uh, 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 dialogue uh, amongst all these different groups. And also exper uh, compare exper experiences. For me it was extremely crucial, for example, to, to get to know people from Razem in Poland and understand, okay, how did they organize? How did they, uh, the, the, this political group that formed in 2015, certain lessons they've learned that we haven't learned here yet or will learn? I mean. Or just look at the discussion in France, if they just had paid a little bit more attention to the exact same discussions happening one year earlier amongst Sanders versus Hillary camps. You know, it's the exact same scenario. And they, many of them didn't, didn't, don't even seem to realize how uncannily close the arguments are to the ones that have been exchanged already. There were, there were a few. Yeah, so yeah there's yeah. Yeah. a few. Can, can I suggest with just a moment of well, procedure? Somebody could be the, you know, the stack. You know, that is somebody who says, okay, it's your turn, your turn, your turn, and yeah, move it on. Who can do that? Yeah. He, he was talking also a long time ago. Yeah. I guess, but there were more people before. <laughs> okay, somebody want to just remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the camera um, came in. Was it the ones? Wrote it because yeah. 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 So um, I wanted to, to kind of respond to take up the fitting of uh, said just said to now and to possibly make some co connections uh, as far as I can now remember everything and uh, and like I even to get a bit about practical things that need to have a, a, a base of uh, a starting point from somewhere. Okay. They would like to begin from complicity and to go back to you talk about Erebon and uh, kind of to me Erebon is uh, the, the best example for complicity to me the, the example about Erebon is that he He's criticizing right-wing populism and uh, he says there is even no need of left-wing populism. Well, but he has endorsed Mélenchon, right? You know that. Um, <laughs> yeah, okay, but the though makes different. Um, yeah, but it's true, like you said before, yeah. Um, uh, but he, at the, at the end, says, no, we need to look at the example of uh, Podemos in Spain. Now, Podemos to me is the first example of left-wing populism on the top of all of them. You know? And uh, after, so, so to me, like Ariborn is uh, a real collabo, how to say. You know? what? He's a, a collaborator of, of like dominant ideology. 
is kind of the intellectual, one of the intellectuals that, that, that try to play this game uh, without and to, to come out clean. But he's not clean at all, I think, to me. Um, to not to stay on Erebon, uh, yeah, it, it reminds me that if I hear about him, that uh, we, because we were speaking about governments and institutions, but particularly um, governments or, or like state or institutions in this case, mm -hmm. not artistic ones, that uh, we have no friendly governments. There is no, there is no place in the world where the people that is fighting can rely on their government unless they are, in, they don't stay with the fascists. Just for saying it very easily. Um, and uh, to the fact about identity, that is, uh, is really uh, can, can be important, but it needs to be understood in, in our in our logic. Uh, that uh, if we don't have friendly government, we need to find our identity, and that cannot be on the line of. Uh, or can be difficultly on the line of institutions and and um, politics, uh, for example, par parliamentary politics and this, this kind of things. If we want to search an identity, it needs to be ours. It needs to be our program, our ideas, our uh, uh, autonomous uh, efforts to self organize ourselves uh, and this uh, identity I, I see it more near to not we are artists, we are intellectuals but from where we come from or what we go for in the sense who we defend uh, uh, kind of our identity is more uh, amongst the working class than amongst uh, the art industry the art industry or kind of, I don't know kind of explain myself and on identity there is another important thing uh, since you speak uh, about uh, different identities identities kind of um, uh, that there are a lot of identities identities that should go together friendly kind of no? I, I think so tell me if I remember wrong <laughs> But uh, the, the identitarian movement builds uh, today on the fact on the fact of ethno ethno nationalism. That tries to that is the other phase of of uh, recognizing differences, uh, cultural differences, and uh, that are positive and they are needed because we are one world and we cannot be all the same. So we need to go all together to. Uh, enlarge this beauty of differences. No? Um, uh, yeah, I don't remember now. Uh, yeah, one one last thing. Uh, I I have uh, I, f I found this, the questions we we uh, we began we started from a little bit difficult uh, because. Uh, I cannot really recognize in, in, in some, some kind of establishment uh, and it's good that we made the difference between intellectuals, artists, uh, working class, as, as a few of a few told and uh, that I even find difficult the question, the, this thema, thema, thematisieren, how to say in English? thematization uh, about our our own tasks uh, by speaking uh, on this language on the level of documenta manifesta and and this bigger um, how to say like like institutions I'm, I'm not good with it and I have my really my difficulties to to try to explain myself uh, through through this, because I never had access to institutions 
that are big or important like this and I have, yeah, I just I really just have difficulties to deal with that kind of level of debate. And I would like to bring bring it more uh, to bring it down on a more easy level for us that we are the most of us, I think, I guess, are artists that stay down there unseen ephemera. You know? And yeah, can bring it more down to more uh, um, yeah, normal. Can I just human 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 somebody who, who keeps track of the mm -hmm. time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm finished. Okay. I'm finished. Thank you. That's Thank it. You. Thank you. Wolfgang. Okay, I, I wanted to bring up something that to, to link to many questions that there's a lot of us talking kind of s s go back and forth from art to artist as if it would be the same or identical like I'm trying to speak as an artist but there is something uh, there is um, many things of my motivations of my, my, my uh, political ideas as a, as, a, as a member of society but then there is also like a futurist possibility I have towards my art, that I'm actually able to make my art. And um, that is not identical with other responsibilities I have. And that is a whole different set of complicity that is needed for me. You know? like I, and I think that's when we, when we try to relate to, to David Reed and also reading a poem. There's a different language I need to speak that I uh, that I want to use in relation to the language I'm using right now. And, and I, I'm, I'm lost and I, I have to the fault. <laughs> 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 like uh, Maybe we can come back and, and uh, yeah. I'm aware of the time, it's, it's quarter past nine and it's been a long time, so maybe we start wrapping up, but um, you've been wanting to say something. Yeah, I actually lost it, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's not a, that's not my life. I had, uh, I had a question that was um, after your question and then uh, Anna is your name or uh, your name then you were explaining uh, yeah and Elisa, sorry uh, then you were explaining uh, a bit about hands of uh, and, and, and how it has started the computer and I was wondering just the question of, of the origin of it how did it start who are the people behind it? Because that make, can make things very clear as well. Just I thought, like, as the picture, you know, it's this and it's moving towards getting in touch with different places, different localities, activists, mm -hmm. uh, etc. And then I was thinking of, okay, there's a motivation, so what is the origin of it? Just to. I mean, uh, yeah. because maybe because there was some contradiction when you were talking about the right wing meeting. <coughs> Actually, the left wing has been meeting all the time as well. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm not now talking about art, but just like about new left in Europe. Uh, the I has been it was all, really amazing, all, uh, all over the place. The, at the very end of your, your comment, there was, was that how you said the very concrete thing that there's artists that are mobilizing to help activists in political by-elections. I mean, that's like a really mm. very specific yeah, was, um, practice. It's yeah. like so yeah. I was so wondering, concrete. But, yeah. uh, but it's uh, fantastic. I mean, I mean, in fact, more things. I mean, and in fact uh, uh, we are so embryonic, but, but uh, over the last few weeks uh, it's becoming very clear and we are starting to to, to team up very much in the vein of what what you what, what your practice uh, or, or and your organisations are doing, which is identify uh, coal face uh, on the coal face organisations from Standing Rock to the Women's March to to literally to to MEPs to and and um, mm -hmm. and uh, identify and, and and to try and use this kind of um, this resource which we've developed, which began as 250 mostly celebrity artists who couldn't give a fuck, but, mm -hmm. uh, but managed to give, give us a lot of traction and space and, 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 and press. And now it's 4,000 people, a lot of whom actually do, uh, are, are offering their services. And it's, mm -hmm. a, it's, a, it's a matter of, 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 of tying those together. And it's also a matter of these meetings happening twice a week in, at the moment, four cities, and that's going to, you know, and there's one going to begin in Brussels soon. So 
I think these also just this kind of human exchange and and also uh, uh, important hookups. You know exactly what what Eliza was describing. So it's it's very precise. And I think mm -hmm. I thank you for attacking the language because that language of the website needs updating because mm -hmm. at the beginning it was uh, it was an impulsive uh, juvenile response to to a toxic. Uh, tsunami and, and and now it has a kind of more accurate uh, direction. To can, I, can I throw in? A, yeah. Because um, like you say, celebrity. I mean, I've been thinking one thing about you know, like if we think, you know, and then I agree to your comments on the language and, and I thought similar things when I read uh, read the uh, uh, stuff online the first time. Uh, but. Uh, there's one thing about you know movements uh, you know if you talk about like uh, uh, you know class movements or, or, or workers and right? solidarity you know these uh, artists obviously are like you know uh, kind of individuals individuals actually I mean I, I collaborate with a duo which is a hundred you know it's a very becoming more and more popular, but usually artists work alone, you know. Uh, uh, but also in this sector, obviously, uh, there is an enormous difference between earnings, right? You know, so, uh, so that's just like uh, one thing that, you know, in a way, uh, uh, the we isn't so simple, just, I mean, it's like uh, we, the workers of the fabric, would be fighting with the directors. You know, it's actually, I mean, there are artists out there that are, you know, like just to throw it out and you know, it's like, it makes, it make, it, that's what made, makes the whole thing, you know, like it's the elephant in the room, you know? Dark we're, matter, yeah. Huh? We're talking about, we're talking about, you know, I mean, all of Elias, you know, my countryman, uh, he earns more than, you know, my whole neighbor, you know, my, my whole village or whatever, in Hanover, you know, where it comes from. You know, and, and, and and more than I can imagine to, to earn in a lifetime or, or two lifetimes, you know, so on a corporation scale, so that still here we are like we, you know, so it's just, uh, I think it's very important for a movement uh, of such diversity economically to clarify things like that or to have those kind of things on the table, because otherwise it's pretty, pretty difficult, it's just, it's, a, it's like a, a it's a, it's a, it's an ideal uh, scientific research for uh, a situation as a, as a closed bubble for distrust. You know? yeah. How can you in trust develop in like if he or if you be you know if you're not this two cents a work yeah. for like uh, you know, three hundred thousand euro or, or even let's see in a cheap one, you know? <laughs> and I, I, just to interrupt you, I think... And I don't want to keep it longer, but I do, you know. You use the word movement, I think... Uh, we're I'm not against it, I'm just... No, 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 just but I, I wouldn't call us a movement. I think let's stick to this idea of coalition, which was heatedly debated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it allows for... And I just... So, and sorry, sorry, just to stop you, because uh, mm -hmm. Christina's been waiting a long time. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I, I, uh, I was thinking that perhaps uh, one of the things that is in the room also is in the debates about uh, uh, different uh, forms of uh, cultural production in the frame of biennials and so and referring to your uh, commons and the conditions of work and, and trust and that perhaps one of the things that we should start also trying to think about is the, the sites of cultural production, the structures of cultural production also as commons in that uh, scenario of, of, uh, that uh, George was also uh, describing. So, so when we are speaking about documenta, we are not speaking about documenta, we are speaking about documenta being a hub, you know, it's an enterprise structure and what does that mean for cultural production in relation mm -hmm. and, and to the artistic practice and our possibilities mm -hmm. to engage with, uh, with um, <coughs> With these issues, and, 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 and if, if it, the concept of public or the concept of a, of a public institution is actually embedded in agencies and this kind of like, I don't know, the Berlin agency, what is it called, the one that makes all the things? Uh, I forgot right now. So, uh, what does this mean um, uh, for, for the political and the artistic work? And perhaps that's a field uh, to, to also. Because it's somehow 
in different aspects in the, in the subjects. I mean, maybe maybe because I'm more sort of aware of time, and I could just kind of just wrap up again, referring to my experience in Brussels, because um, I, I need to just communicate to you that um, you talked about the distinct dis the distinction between art and, and artists. Uh, uh, everybody in the room in Brussels, the all day spoke about culture. I've never spoken about art. Yeah. And and the notion of culture for them was as broad as ethnic identity to 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 the types of trainers you wear, but I mean, the hard game was all sort of about art and, and 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 that's that's how urgent our our existence is, is that we've got to go to those policy makers who are defining the structure of our our state. And, 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 the, and the height of the borders and, and who has access to the money. And I think, uh, you know, so it's as basic as that, the, 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 the urgency. Does, does the kind of immediate comment to what you said, that shift into EU politics and UNESCO documents is a shift from arts policy to council policy happened approximately 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. when this uh, council industry rhetoric was launched and there are some it's, it's uh, a brilliant analysis is also about that it's that they were done then by network called republic art which also might be interesting for this network because of course this shift has been happening in europe for a long <coughs> period of time i live personally for example in denmark in early 2000 when right-wing government took over and, and basically, there are some really interesting working models which re, uh, still exist there and which were born as a response to the fact that right-wing government really fast actually got rid of the people who were, who were it is basically, against the new policies and so on and the field organized and some of, of the people lost their jobs and paid the price. But at the same time, there's, for example, something called trampoline huse. Mm -hmm. which, which is kind of, which is one good example and so on. And I think it's good to keep in mind that also these battles have been going on for a long time. And just also to connect to these models which have been developed, that it's not only us all the time kind of reacting yeah. to what right-wing and fascist these governments are doing, but as you said, that what can be this kind of common space practices. Mm -hmm. And that's what we have been doing also as, as, as perfect to mobile. I come from Finland, it's also with right-wing fascist government. Yes, we have to oppose, we have to ally with other groups when this is kind of things are happening, but at the same time, opposing is not enough. We have to be able to develop other kind of practices is also for institutions also. For me, I mean, sometimes you also need these positions in order to oppose and in order to have a Voice, but it depends what kind of institution is it. Trampoline who that is an institution, but it's it's a different type of institution. Mm -hmm. can, can we wrap up? Yeah, yeah. I'll yeah. no, just yeah. just a proposal also for institutional kind of building. And I I have a kind of a you know half my head is anarchist, the other half is like realist, and so I have to be able to kind of deal with the fact that you know the world is run by structures, and and these are being constantly reinvented to oppress us. And we have to be able to reinvent the forms of not only resistance, but I have no problem with that word, but also constructing alternatives. And so, just to really be short, so I don't take a long time. I'm, I, in terms of your proposal for group working groups, great. Let's do that next time. Yes. I mean, yeah, it's so obvious. Yeah. I have. Uh, I think the other thing is also that um, there's something called the European Commons Assembly. We should be able to feed into larger groups that are doing the same thing on cross-sectoral basis. Yeah? And, and also connect to those who have experience, like Marita said in Denmark or in Finland, where they really have. And fascist is not an exaggeration. I mean, there is a coalition between a, a real fascist party with the neoliberals. It's just a fact. And we have a minister okay. of culture yeah. now who has published this race biological right. articles. Yeah. And to make, <laughs> to, like just to, to, to kind of conclude the institutional yeah. point, yeah, is, is that maybe what we could do is learn from how to hold assemblies. Because one of the problems we have is we get lost in many, many issues. We need to have somebody who's this stack, you know, like in a normal Occupy kind of situation. Yeah. Or, I mean, there's, there are alternatives. We have a, a, a format called the Arts Assembly I mentioned, which is extremely difficult, but it's extremely productive. 
It's really very good at defining if you have a kind of proposal, like a a clear proposal. I want to take this to my European meeting. I'm going to Brussels. I'm talking to a commissioner who's in charge of culture, and you write some kind of proposal, and you have 400, you know, famous artists. They all want to have their one word in there. That's not good. We need to have a procedure for for approving a certain kind of proposal, and we we have that kind of in place. So I could propose, you know, like a, a session where we can talk about how that works, the actual mechanics of assembly. Okay. Can I just end on a practical thing? Please, would everybody um, fill in their contact details for having it? I think, where's the form? Does somebody know? Yeah. On the speaker. Is it there? No, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so just will you pass that round? And if it hasn't gone round, I don't know. But if we did it before, we don't need to do it again, right? Thank you everybody, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.